Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has told the UK's Foreign Secretary David Cameron Israel will make its own decisions on how to respond to Iran's attack, adding that his government will do everything necessary to defend itself. Bill Cameron's been in Israel today urging restraint to the Iranian drone and missile attack over the weekend. He'd earlier called on the Israeli government to be smart as well as tough. Israel's repeatedly vowed to retaliate to the more than 300 projectiles sent by Iran and its proxies on Saturday night into Sunday. Still with me in the studio, Talk TV's chief political commentator, Peter Gardwell, and down the line, I'm joined by former Army officer, Lieutenant Colonel Stuart Crawford, and, and Anthony Glees, professor of security and intelligence studies at the University of Buckingham. Why don't we start with Colonel Crawford on this um, and, and, and just explain why David Cameron is counselling the Israeli Prime Minister to use head instead of heart to take the heat out of the situation and not to retaliate. What is he fearing at this point or what is he trying to ward off? Sorry, is that for me? Stuart, that is for you, yes. All oh, right, I beg your pardon, sorry. Um, well, I think that, uh, I mean, Britain has obviously taken sides in this latest confrontation and it's hardly surprising given our long historical connection with that part of uh, the Middle East. And uh, the very fact that uh, we have RAF typhoons shooting down incoming Iranian drones and cruise missiles over Jordan and, and Syria, if that's indeed where the action took place, is indicative of that. I think what uh, uh, the Foreign Secretary is trying to avoid is a completely wild knee-jerk reaction from Israel. Um, which might include an attack on uh, the Iranian soil itself, which I don't think is in anybody's interest. I don't think anybody is looking for a confrontation of that level in the Middle East. So the fact that he's saying, yes, you, you use your head as well as your heart, I think is, is a sort of gentle nudge in that direction. But uh, Benjamin Netanyahu is absolutely correct. It's up to his government to decide what to do. And I'm afraid the rest of us can urge restraint, but in the end, we'll just have to watch from the sidelines or become further involved. But Stuart, it's quite clear, isn't it, that whatever David Cameron knows, whatever you know, whatever the public fears, the idea of escalation, the idea of being incendiary, inflammatory and causing conflict that will spread wider and wider and heaven forfend involve the entire world in some kind of hideous conflagration isn't something that won't have occurred to Netanyahu. He will be obviously in receipt of far greater and far wider intelligence than everybody else put together. He'll know exactly what he's doing if he does it. So knowing that he knows and knowing that he doesn't need David Cameron to patronise or counsel him into being smart or bright or wise or level-headed, uh, you know, and we certainly wouldn't like our Prime Minister to be given that advice by any other Foreign Secretary from a visiting country. We really wouldn't. We'd find that incredibly uh, patronising. But given that Netanyahu knows everything that everyone else knows and probably more, is it likely that he'll do it? Well, I think that's a, a very finely balanced uh, judgment. And he'll have stacks of information. I mean, he'll, he'll have as much intelligence and information from the United States satellites and other assets that, that, that he, you know, he'll have more than he can shake, shake a stick at. But I think it's important for Israel, which is basically besieged by enemies, uh, that it uh, treats its allies courteously. And whilst he may not listen to David Cameron, at least he's had the courtesy of meeting him and taking his advice. Uh, whether he follows it or not, I think uh, will be uh, less likely than, than more <coughs> likely, uh, but we'll just have to wait and see. All right, let me let me bring uh, Professor Anthony Glees into this conversation. I mean, you're smiling affably, but many people are feeling, you know, proper kind of tremors of fear in anticipation of what could happen next. Uh, I'm wondering what you feel might happen next. Well, Vanessa, I'm one of those, that generation of British public school boys that smiles when actually they're afraid. And yes, I, I'm, I'm very fearful. And I do, I'm afraid, disagree with what uh, Stuart Crawford said there on, on, on two counts, really. He says uh, Netanyahu is perfectly entitled to make his own decisions on whether to retaliate for retaliation, to up the ante on every tit-tat in this awful war. And my response is, no, it's not entirely up to Netanyahu. Netanyahu needs to remember that the reason that 99% of those Iranian drones and cruise missiles, the same drones that uh, Putin is using to attack Ukraine, the same manufacturer, 
uh, that they did not get through is thanks to US intelligence, British intelligence, French intelligence, and the combined power of the United States and Britain and France. So we protected Israel, and that certainly gives us a, a right to ensure that, uh, do everything we can to ensure that Israel will not retaliate. However, it seems entirely clear that Israel will retaliate. What, what's really been a huge difference over the past couple of years is that what intelligence, the secret world, tells us about what is going to happen is actually told to us before it happens rather than after. So we saw that uh, over Ukraine, where we knew before the actual Russian attack on Ukraine that intelligence predicted an attack on Ukraine. We were told this again before the Iranian attack on Israel the other night, and we are now being told again that it is inevitable that Israel will attack Iran. And that would be a grave escalation and is appalling. That, you know, that's the reason I'm unhappy, that's the reason I'm smiling, is that we are being drawn, we are powerless to prevent ourselves being drawn into a wider and more dangerous conflict because Netanyahu has fallen head and shoulders into the hole he has dug for himself over the intelligence failure on the 7th of October. We must never forget, Hamas started this, a plan hatched by Hamas, and I'm sure Iran, to coax Israel into overreacting and then triggering a wider war, which the Iranian ayatollahs and their proxies hope will end with the destruction of Israel. That's their aim. And we're kind of watching it happen, a car crash in, in slow motion, and we can't do anything about it. Let's bring Peter Cardwell into this. I mean, we've got David Cameron counselling Netanyahu. Netanyahu saying really fairly blatantly, well, you can say whatever you like, I'll do whatever I like. Yes, it's true. And also we had a phone call between the Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and Benjamin Netanyahu last night. It took a while for Prime Minister Netanyahu to fit in Rishi Sunak. Uh, there was That sort of rumbled on for a while. But certainly uh, David Cameron being on the ground, former Prime Minister, uh, well-known international statesman, that is, the Israelis are at least going to, well, they've given him a hearing, they're going to listen. Mm -hmm. But yes, I think they will do what they want to do. And Benjamin Netanyahu is under a lot of internal political pressure as well from his own cabinet, his work, but not just his his five-person war cabinet, but also his political allies uh, to keep him in power. And there are lots of people in Israel who have called for him to go, for there to be an election, even though there's a war on, which is almost unprecedented. And the fact that there's probably more unity in Israel now post Iran's attacks than there was a few days ago. So it's a very different political context to Benjamin Netanyahu, slightly stronger now than he was, but still weakened on a number of fronts. And actually, there'll be lots of international leaders. David Cameron is just one person, OK, from quite a strong G7 nation, but nonetheless, only one person who is giving his advice in this regard. Stuart, what if the focus was shifted from Iran to Gaza and pressure were brought to bear by allies, I don't know which ones in particular, but David Cameron may be among them, them to uh, upon Hamas to return the hostages. The moment that occurred, the second that they touched down on Israeli soil, and these are children and babies and young women and elderly people who were grabbed, some of them raped and, and, and shunted off to, to places in Gaza that even central Hamas didn't seem to know exactly where some of them were. Some will have died, some have been given back. But if pressure were brought to bear simply to bring those people back home, then there would be an immediate cease in the hostilities and the world could probably take a deep breath again. And Anthony Glees wouldn't have to smile in that tense public school way anymore. He could smile genuinely and sincerely. You know, what about that focus? What about that? Well, if I, if I can smile in, in my public school um, uh, demeanour, um, I, I have to say that I think the return of the, the uh, hostages by Hamas is one of the crucial keys in returning uh, a modicum of peace and stability uh, to the region. But I think that um, Iran's attack on uh, 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 Israel, uh, using with uh, over 300 missiles and, and, uh, and ballistic missiles and so on, was uh, a strategic mistake. Because uh, before they did that, Israel was facing the disapproval of the world uh, for what it saw as increasingly wanton destruction in Gaza and the cities in Gaza. 
but they've now handed a, a, a cloak of respectability back to Netanyahu and his government by what I consider to be a totally uh, uh, out of scale response to the assassination of the IRGC brigadier generals in the consulate in uh, Damascus. I think that was a miscalculation. And now the ball's in Israel's court. And um, a final point is, of course, that I mean, Israel is, is under threat and has been for a long, long time, but there's absolutely no way or circumstances in which the USA will allow Israel to be overwhelmed.